Good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome along to the vlog. Hey, tidy, eh? Bit of painting. Get that door done, get that door done. It's going to look spot on up here, isn't it? That is a job on the list. So what we've been doing is uh, just tidying the place up while I've been doing some other work. We've still got a bit of a leak issue on this box gutter. Never going to go away, really, until it's done properly. So he paid for somebody to bodge it this year, and uh, that's what they've done, bodged it. But that's not really a big problem at the moment. Just means I can't use that section of the brewery. So if we have a walk down here, you'll see we've still got quite a bit of stuff uh, like strewn around the place. A bit of packaging here I need to get rid of and whatnot. But the workshop itself is pretty much reorganised. I think I showed this on a previous video. Managed to paint the doors, get the walls all painted. Looks kind of neat. Even clean the window so you can see in the scrapyard out the back. Which is full of timber and other scrap. Which reminds me I really do need to replace this tarpaulin. It's kind of seen better days. Look it's hanging down. Not really doing a job. A uh, couple of other things I wanted to touch base with you all about. Uh, we've been working on uh, a Grant stroke underback and uh, Valentine system mutually, Martin and I. And uh, well, this is my offering. As you can see, we have a very similar looking Valentine arm to Martin's. I uh, had to do a few welds, so we've got this three-piece ball valve onto uh, a T. We've had to create this monstrosity of a weld to put a 110 degree angle on it so that when this stands up, it stands up straight alongside the mash tun proper. Then we've got the control box there. I've decided to wire mine in uh, so I've split into the um, pump supply cable, as you saw. As you may have seen, should I say, on the uh, wiring video. Just need to find somewhere else for the pump to live, because at the moment she was hung on that little blue rail there. That one with a little bit of rust on needs a paint. But it's slightly too high. It's higher than the top level in the underback, so what we're going to have to do is I think mount it on the underback somewhere so I'll just weld a little rail on. I also cleaned that keg up so it looks a little bit more presentable. And we've given it a test and she works. She works! She works like a dream. So that project is functional now and should allow me to uh, sparge beers without the pain of a stuck mash, which we did have several times before uh, before we canned all that beer. It was a real pain in the arse. And uh, one handy little thing about uh, controlling, listen to that, everything's running now, because I was all testing it, I was testing it all yesterday. But yeah, let me turn these pumps off. One handy, thing about having this water meter in is when I press run I can set the inlet speed of the water to exactly what I want and we were running at around five liters per minute into the mash so by using the meter on the control panel let's say we we held this at five litres per minute and we'd set the valentine arm. We can therefore guarantee that our runoff into the underback is also five litres per minute. So it enables us to actually quantify our sparge rate just by having that little flow meter in line, which is really quite handy because then if I was to have an assistant brewer come along and... Uh, take care of the brew day whilst I was not here, I'm now able to specify the speed at which the mash should be sparged, whereas previously 
it was kind of a you have to look and get this and you know a bit of guesswork and trying to explain the speed and everything else uh just like that without having any numbers to put to it is quite difficult so now it's quantifiable which means it's repeatable accurately which is handy so i'm going to go up here into the pub to show you something else uh, we're waiting this morning for a steel delivery and once that steel delivery arrives we're going to be making some treads for the stairs um but yeah really i want to show you this well what do you think that is now the stairs uh, i'd like to thank uh Tortec info on instagram for designing me these Thank you very much, Phil. He did the uh, artwork here. And uh, it's my fault that we cut the border off. There was a border, a lovely border all the way around this, but uh, yeah, measurements, yeah. Anyway, uh, we put this on yesterday. It's wallpaper and it was printed and delivered within a week. I can't remember the name of the company that's done it. It wasn't cheap though, but I just thought that that would really set off the stairs and you know what it really has I noticed there's a little bit of a tone contrast difference from one sheet to the next just here which highlights the joint in the wallpaper but that doesn't really matter just look at that so to give you a little bit of perspective what we've got here is the boil kettle obviously as you may recognize from the brewery and uh, the boil kettle has been turned into a robot and he's standing in front of uh, Retford Town Hall, which I think is fantastic considering that uh, all our customers really like uh, that kind of heritage. And next to it is uh, the Retford Town Centre uh, Cenotaph or War Memorial, if you like. A lot of people call it a cenotaph. I know it's really a war memorial. But doesn't that look fantastic? And if I just go down the stairs, we are uh, repainting all the stairs. So everything, all the timber work's gone into black now as it was grey before. But as you come out of the toilets and you look up the stairs, right there at the top is the boil kettle. You can see the kind of black and white profile we're going for on the stairs and the uh, spindles. And then we've painted all of the risers black as well. I say we have, Stuart and uh, Chelsea have been doing most of the painting in here. Uh, and the treads, we're going to go and pick up some rugged laminate, real wood laminate flooring that will stand up to a lot of traffic. And then each individual tread at the front is going to have some 50 by 50 angle iron on there to reinforce them. Probably put some more attachments on the wall as well for the handrail but i am absolutely over the moon at how this looks i think that really is one of the best walls in the town isn't it great so another little job that i'm going to be doing this morning before the steel arrives bought dominic this little scooter thing fold up scooter that you can sling over his shoulder and uh ride to school on Inflatable tyres, like the old Scootex style things that we used to have as kids. And he wants to take it to school, and I'm worried that obviously there's a lot of little shits around at school and somebody's potentially going to pinch it. So we're going to stamp his initials on the bottom to identify it. So it should, should it go wandering around anywhere, some little bugger pinch it, and then we can say, oi, that's ours. So I've got these punches, this punch set, which I've had for a long time. And I'm going to see if uh, if this will do the job. I think it's an aluminium frame. So I'm just going to go and do a quick test on here. And see how hard I need to hit it to imprint the letters. And uh, this is a piece of aluminium. And if that's easy enough to do, we'll go and mark up the scooter so it doesn't get pinched well there we go just needs a, a relatively confident blow uh you wouldn't want to hit your thumb let's put it that way 
and that seems to do the trick so I'm gonna gear up uh, maybe with a bigger hammer See if I've got a bit of a lump hammer under here I don't know if I have actually I should have one somewhere it's probably in the building bucket might be over here haha -ha. the building bucket which I dug through yesterday and caused another mess constantly chasing my tail in that respect there we go that'll do a better job let's mark up let's mark his name on this scooter I think we'd call that done Dom HH there we go another job bites the dust There we go, that is 13 pieces of steel for the 13 steps that we've got in the pub. So I've cut that from the stock that actually arrived this morning, but I didn't wait for it, Gemma did. I shot across to B&Q and I picked up some laminate flooring so we can lay the floor and then secure it with these, um, what would you call them? threshold treads of some type or another so two different sizes these are the main treads and these fit in between the uh, the end pillars on the handrail because it's a little bit narrower there I'm going to take these next door and get them installed and hopefully I'll get all of the floor laid today before end of play we're looking at what's that 10 to 1 so about four hours really once I get set up I've got to take the saw around and whatnot. The aftermath. <laughs> so in the end we went for solid oak boards. Uh, 15 mil thick from B and Q of course. This is the brand. About 40 quid a square meter, so not exactly the cheapest thing on the planet, but it's gonna be as durable as it gets. So yeah, that's a pile of offcuts down there. Not too much really. We only needed six packs to do the whole stairs, but I can guarantee you, I won't be doing any running tonight because my knees are shot. I have been careful with them. I've got a kneeling pad, but it's the getting up and getting down that's the issue. So there we go, that's the old cheap shit laminate flooring that come with the pub. And then this is the oak and I've put 3mm 50mm angle iron treads on each, on each step. So as we go up the stairs we're going to have uh, no danger of the timber moving around. I think it's turned what was a tired dreary horrid staircase you may remember a few videos back when I was ripping the carpet up it didn't look great and now is something actually that feels like a feature it's a feature it's part of the it's a feature wall part of the pub that we can be proud of as opposed to you know the stairs of the stairs but we've got other stuff going on it now actually looks absolutely grand. And I'm really pleased with how it's all come out. Just a little bit of a iffy situation at the top, but easily resolved. So where we hit the cheap laminate flooring from the oak at the top of the stairs, there is a little bit of a lip. It's about one millimeter, two at a push. So I know you could trip over and break your neck on a matchstick, but that should be uh, that should be passable. I mean, there's a three millimeter step up onto the steel, so it shouldn't be an issue. And then because all this cheap laminate has been just stuck down, I mean, you can see I pulled up that foam back in. Awful stuff. So to make sure that this doesn't move and we end up having this lift, I've managed to get the tongue of the old floor incorporated into the groove of the oak and then I've just banged four screws in so if we stay here for another 10 years which I really hope we do then we'll probably invest and we'll extend this oak flooring out into the room and we'll be able to run out and do the whole of the upstairs of the pub and it'll be easy 
a case of either coming off of this board and replacing this, get rid of these screw holes, or just lift this piece of steel up and start afresh. It's just one board, it's not a big deal. So there's still a few bits to do in here, a little bit of painting to finish off. You can see the grey there, but I'm really pleased. I'll just show you what the pub looks like, folks, if you've not been in for a while. So spirits off the spirit shelf. All the, uh, it looks like we're moving out, doesn't it? But yeah, Stuart's pulled all this stuff off so we can get to the woodwork and we're, we're glossing everything black. I don't know why they had it all grey in the first place. Black is such a, a more suitable colour for a pub. And uh, yeah, just junk everywhere, essentially. Rubbish all over the place. This looks like it's on the wonk big time. Looks, It looks like the pub's sliding down the hill. I don't know how that's happened, but it's happened. A bit more junk around the front of the pub. Obviously, we're still trying to get everything glossed up. It looks so much better, this, with the black. I think they've done a really good job, everyone who's been and helped still do it. Uh, all the spirit shelf cleared off, obviously. That's because he's giving that a varnish. I assume these chairs are here because he just painted the saloon door, so I guess I'm not allowed through there. So we'll go this way around. Into the kitchen. If you're watching, Tom, look what they've done to your grill, mate. They've just piled rubbish all over it yet again. Now all the glasses have been rejuvenated and uh, yeah, well, we're just making the most of the space while we are in here to get as many of the maintenance jobs or improvements ticked off the list as possible. Freezer kicking in. And hopefully, when everyone comes back, it'll just be a case of uh, a day cleaning. You know, cleaning the prep surfaces for food and what have you. And then, yeah, we swing the doors open and start trading. So, the only drawback is we don't know when that's going to be, folks, I'm afraid. I can't see it being December with the current restrictions as they are. And frankly, I can't see it being January either. Because unless there's a huge appetite for people to come out and enjoy uh, eating out and going to the pub, which I would, I really would. Um, yeah, it'll be difficult to make the numbers work. But, as ever, I remain optimistic. Particularly now we have this fantastic mural on the wall. I think it looks great. New steps look fantastic. I'm thinking maybe that light can do with an improvement. Something a little bit brighter and a little bit more. Or well, something to fill this space. We've got a two metre by two metre void here that we could hang probably a type of spider light with maybe something like that or maybe even make a light out of beer bottles. If we're still closed in January, folks, I'll get on it. I'll do that. But bear in mind when we do open, I'm going to need a month to wind the brewery up and get beer into production as well. Well, there's my jacket. I'm going to chuck that on. I'm going to bugger off home, I'm here, I'm going to go home and hopefully get this video up tonight and then with any luck uh, we'll be back in tomorrow to do some more maintenance work and maybe another vlog. See you then, cheers.